this is where finishing rolling motion and then we start uh, chapter 11 which is torque and angular momentum So remember last time we did the problem with, uh, it was from the internet, it was something rolling down to the bottom. Uh, now let's do something similar, but we say, what if there is a considerable amount of rolling friction? Let's say the tire is a little bit flat, so coefficient of friction increases, right? So how would we approach that? So now uh, we have, uh, let's say it's a solid cylinder, like a tire of a car. So then calculate the acceleration of the ball of the cylinder, A center of mass of the cylinder, and the B center of mass final of cylinder. And then assume that there's coefficient of rolling friction 0.08. So the numbers that we saw, well, let's, let's say it's even bigger. Let's make it 0 0.1. Right? So the numbers we saw were 0 0.004 or 0 0.005, but we can say, okay, let's say it's a flat uh, tire, so the coefficient of rolling friction is 0 0.1. So how do we calculate a center of mass? So now we do the forces on the object, the normal force, mg. Then you got your mg sine theta, mg sine theta, and then mg cos theta. Then you have friction fs, static friction, which uh, makes it roll, right? And then on top of it, you got rolling friction, F sub R, right? So then in the translationally, right, what, what's gonna happen? Mg sine theta minus Fs minus Fr is equal to Ma, okay? Fs, you cannot put mu s n. It's not equal to mu s n because that's only equal to when it's on the verge of sliding, when it's on the verge of slipping. So you're just gonna put as Fs. But Fr, you're gonna put as mu r n, coefficient of rolling friction times n. Okay, now what's the n gonna equal? Well, n equals mg cos theta, right? So then you just put that. And the m and the m and the m cancels. So, so far we just have g sine theta minus fs minus mu sub r g cos theta is a. And that's a center of mass. Right? So in order to calculate S and mass, then we need an equation for Fs, right? What Fs needs to be. So then for that, we do the torques. Sum of the torques is equal to I times alpha, right? Uh, so then what's the torque on the system? So then we have here <coughs> uh, Fs times R, right? In other words, the only force that is helping it rotate is the friction force Fs, right? The weight doesn't cause it to rotate. Fr also doesn't cause it to rotate. So Fr only fights against the translation, but it doesn't help the rotation, right? So we have here Rfs is equal to the moment of inertia, right? So then R and R cancels, Fs is equal to half M, and R alpha equals A tangential, right? 
and then that's equal to ACM. In other words, when you're doing the torque one for these kind of problems, the torque is telling you this is what, how much friction you need based on the shape of the object. This is how much friction you need for it to roll without slipping, right? The friction depends on its acceleration, but the acceleration also depends on how much friction there is. It's like a cycle, right? So friction depends on how much you want it to accelerate, and acceleration depends on what the friction is on it. Well, how can you solve that? Well, you can just substitute this into here. So for the A, then once you solve for the A, you can put it back in here, and so for the FS. So it's one that relies on the other, the other relies on the itself, back to itself. So then you just put here G sine theta minus half MA minus mu sub R G cos theta equals A. Oh, no, um, Can we get rid of the... Yeah, yeah, I, we should get rid of the... Oh, you know what? We can't get rid of the M until I put the FS is half MA, right? So there should be an M, uh, an M, and an M. Then once we put the half MA, then the M cancels. So now we have uh, G sine theta minus mu sub R G cos theta, and then half A goes over to the other side. So it becomes three halves A. And now we can calculate the acceleration. So uh, 9.8 sine of 40 minus 0.1 times 9.8 times cosine 40 equals 3 halves A. That's a cylinder. Cylinder, yeah. Why is it that gravity is not producing the torque? I don't understand that. Oh, great question. So he's saying, why is gravity not producing torque? Because, um, um, what is that? Um, Remember, torque is cross product, right? So right. torque is cross product of what versus what? The R crossed into F. But then where is the R measured from? From the center. From the center. Well, let's say in the case of a rod, if it's pivoted here and you observe the force of F, the R would be here, right? So R is always a vector from the pivot point, point around which the object is rotating, right? So in this case, around what point is this object rotating? Around its center, right? That's why we're using the I is half MR squared, because the moment of inertia of a cylinder around an axis going through its center, right, is uh, half mr squared. So the p our pivot point here is this, not this. You see? It's not rotating about here. If it was rotating about here, what would the motion look like? Imagine, imagine uh, this is the point. If it's pivoted about here, it would be more like a swinging object, right? You could pivot it here and then it would swing. It would go like this, then it would go like this, then it would go like this. Mm -hmm. So it's more like this. Like almost like this, you see? Right. Yeah. Right? But uh, an object that's rolling is not pivoted around that contact point. It's rolling around the center of mass. It, it's uh, rolling around the, so, the oh, center. Okay, so here's my explanation. Since late, um, if you want MG to um, be considered in that torque. So the radius, if you focus on the radius, since mg that's the center of mass, so the radius should be zero in that point. So that's why we don't have the mg. The that's why the gravity doesn't MG. exert the torque because the, the gravity the is already at the center. Yeah. And the so pivot point is the center, so it, r is zero. It doesn't change anything. Mm. So can I say like torque is equal to everywhere, like the um, the sigma torque? 
or how bad it is. What's you mean sigma? Oh yeah, the sigma, yeah, the the sum of the torques. Yeah. The sum of the torques, but in this case, there's only one force. Yeah. Now a pivoted object is a bit different. The swinging object. Let's say it's like this. The pivot point is here, and gravity is here. Right. As it starts to swing, what's happening? Is the gravity exerting a torque? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the only reason that it's swinging. It depends on. It's where going like this, like this, like this, like this. If I pivoted here, gravity is like that. Even if I pivoted around this point, as long as I don't pivot around the center of mass. It depends on where your pivot point. Exactly. Is. Yeah. But when you go to rolling motion, the pivot point is the center. That's why if you put a non-uniform cylinder right there, it, it tends to be the. Or if it's non-uniform, let's say one side of it is denser than the other, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Gonna, like, but if the, if the non-uniform is away from the center, the center of mass is still the center. You see? You see what I mean? So it's not going to change the center of mass. If it's radially non-uniform, the center of mass is still going to stay the center. So there's still going to be no torque. Now, you might ask another question uh, following that. You could say, why does the normal force not exert the torque? Right? Why does the normal force not exert the torque? The normal force is not concentrated at the center, but it's at the pivot point. What's the answer to that? Why does N not give you a torque? This is the pivot point, R crossed into F. Angle between it is 100 and huh? They're anti-parallel. Cross product of two vectors, opposite direction is zero. The normal force always goes from the pivot point, goes through the center of mass, right? And then the R goes from the R goes from the pivot point to the where the normal force is. All right, so R N cross into N zero, but M G is here and going down. But the problem with M G is it is at the center. You see, so the only force helping it to rotate is F S. Okay, once we calculate A, then what do we do? Anyone got that? So now you know kind of how to put in uh, friction into that. If there is some rolling friction, it's just kind of like same as putting kinetic friction into a block that's sliding. If it has kinetic friction, you just bring that into here. But the torque doesn't change. OK, so now that becomes um, Three point six nine nine. What is that noise? Oh, oh, okay. Three point six nine. Three point six nine nine meters per second squared. Now, once you get a, how do you get the b final? I have a question. It's a pure rolling motion in this case. So that's why A tangential is equal to ACM. Yes. And why is it like VCM is equal to V tangential too? VCM? Yeah. Yeah, VCM also is also equal to V tangential, oh yeah. Um, but why like on the top of, you know? In other words, the, once I find the A, I'm gonna find the V, v final squared is V initial plus two AD. Right? It's going to be square root of 2 AD, right? Why, I mean, on top of that, that's equal to 2 VCM. The total velocity is 2 VCM, but the tangential is equal to the VCM. Tangential is equal to the VCM. Like total tangential. The total tangential velocity is the sum of the tangential velocity 
plus the center of mass velocity. Oh. Okay. Remember that uh, page that we saw? Here's the, yeah, that's the only thing I'm confused about. Yeah, that's pure. You see, the, this is the total velocity at the top point uh -huh. is 2 RW. Two. And then you get here, the center of mass has just RW. That's VCM. And then the contact point is zero. Yeah. So VCM yes. is equal to V tangential because V tangential is uh, R omega. VCM is also R omega, but the total velocity of the top is twice that. You don't see why, huh? Um, like, where was that you have page that a lot had a video of simulation? There was a video that showed us, was it this one, that had the simulation? Like the tangential velocity, velocity oh. at which point is equal it's to VCM? Up That's and my it stops at the, when it makes contact with the ground. And well, there was one video that showed us a simulation, remember? It, it, goes, it uh, goes up. Then it goes down, then it goes up, like that dot. Right. You know? it doesn't By change. the time it goes up to the top, it's going twice as fast as the center of mass. And then it slows then down. It goes, and then contact zero. point is going zero. But why you say like tangential velocity is equal to like the center of mass? Because uh, the in order to have pure rolling motion without slipping, the contact point should not move. But like so, at which point the so velocity of tangential, like is equal to velocity of VCM? Because I know- At all points, at all points. At all points. Oh yeah, at all points, see? I've got VCM, V tangential, V tangential, V tangential, V tangential, V tangential. And V tangential at all points is equal to VCM. Why on the top that's two VCM? Yeah, now if we draw the total velocity, V total is equal to two VCM. The total, not the V tangent. I'm not saying V tangential is two VCM. I'm saying oh. the total velocity that it has. Oh, the total velocity uh, it has. Because you're on an object that's moving, plus you're rotating around the moving object. That makes sense. Because uh, yesterday uh, I was kind uh, of confused. Uh, yeah, with yeah. respect to a ground reference frame, ground reference. There is somebody watching the tire, the point on the tire, oh. is going to say, oh, okay, oh yeah, by the time it gets there, it goes twice as fast relative to the ground. That makes sense now. Yeah, and then by the time it goes here, see, the, so the path of that ball looks something like this. Boom, zero. What was it called, a cycloid? And then there was a hypercycloid and a ellipt elliptocycloid, something like that. Epicycloid, right? Epicycloid and a hypercycloid. Uh, yeah. And are there certain cases where the where the function of the velocity is, it becomes um, it, it starts going to like in smaller um, intervals? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Uh, like, like, let's say the you know how like the, the back curve itself is like like that. Like it's sort of like the sort of sign. Would it be affected? Like, can, can we like go shrink sometimes depending on how fast the object is moving? Well, no. It's always if if it, if the object is moving the slower, it's just gonna look like this. Yeah, yeah. But the shape shouldn't change. Uh -huh. No, no, shape shouldn't change. But if the radius is smaller as we get closer together, right? Yeah. yeah. Or if you're going up like, a circle on a circle, you mean? Is that what you meant? No, circle like, on top of another circle. Well, like um, a circle, it, a bigger one would just spread those points apart. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the. That's the only. But the thing. shape would still be. The, the shape same. would still be the same. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so after I get the answer, I do my B final. Is gonna be. square root of 2 times 3.699 times the distance d that you have to travel, which is, uh, if they gave us this height, 
let's say two meters, then it's gonna be two over sine 40. So you just basic kinematics once you get the two times A times D. So the most important part in, in this question is torque. It's due to the I alpha. So to find out the, um, the center of mass, like the acceleration of center of mass. Yes, once you get that, the rest of the stuff is easy to find. The final is easy. Okay. Now, does it matter that this is a wheel and not an object just rotating in space? Like, um, yeah, because you need in order to in order to have rolling motion, you need friction. Right. In order to have friction, you need two surfaces that are in contact with some roughness. Yeah. So if you're on an icy surface, right, you can't roll. If you're in outer space, you can't roll. Yeah. Right. Because there's no normal force. Right. You're just floating. But would any of that change if that was just, except for the, never mind, I guess you're right. Now when we go to chapter 11, mm -hmm. which we're gonna start today, we'll do problems like this, where an object will come, hit a ruler, bounce back, and the ruler will, the ruler will start rotating. That could happen in outer space. You could, you could go and hit something and that something could rotate about its center of mass, just freely rotate okay. in the middle of nowhere. You know? And with all the equation, the, like the way you drew everything out, would that still be the same? With That's the, a different kind of problem than these rolling motion okay. problems. These are, these are nastier. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're even about to get even harder. <laughs> okay. Uh, what if we did something like this? Remember the kind of problem that I did? Let's say instead of rolling friction, I change it up a little bit. I take this ball and I give it an initial spin, then drop it onto the inclined plane. So uh, my omega initial, I spin it at a rate of two radians per second. Then I put it, and assume now, now assume there's no rolling friction, but there, uh, now I'm gonna give you the kinetic coefficient of friction. Mu K is 0.4, assume mu R is zero. Okay? Just kinetic. Uh, so now because I'm rolling it initially and I'm dropping it, there's kinetic friction is gonna kick in, right? So then I can say, how many seconds will it take to reach the bottom and what is its V final? How many seconds and V final? So let's put in what we learned on uh, Monday. When I give it initial roll, what happens? Kinetic friction uh, kicks in, right? So since I've given it a roll, the, the contact point is moving back with a certain velocity, so the friction will push it forward, Fk. Let's find out how many seconds it will take and how long will it travel for pure rolling motion to be established. And it might be that it takes the whole distance for it to be established. If not, by this point, it might establish pure rolling motion and then after that, we have to analyze what happens after that, right? So uh, how did we do that? So initially we have, this is the equation, N, Mg, mu Kn. Right, kinetic friction. Oh no, uh, mu kn should be forward. <coughs> mu kn. So what's the acceleration gonna be? Mu kn plus mg sine theta, right? Which is the downward component of the weight. Mu kn plus mg sine theta is equal to ma. And that's what? The A of the center of mass. Why is the mu Kn going in other direction? Because since it's over rolling, at the contact point is moving back. So the, surf, the friction opposes the, the way that it's moving. It you see? You see like this? Why did it go forward? 
because friction pushed it forward. Oh, okay. Have you ever asked? I mean, what, what magical it, force is pushing it forward? Because you gave it that initial... Because <laughs> you gave it the initial thing and the contact point is moving back. So the system, the oh, surface thinks, oh, I've got like, something going this no, way, I have to oppose that motion. It's, 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 that's the force that's pushing it in this direction, so we draw the arrow that way, right? That Even friction is forward. It is about the direction, right? Hmm? It's about the direction of the, of the object rolling. Well, yeah, now, if I roll it backwards it's this way, that's weird. Roll this way and pull you see, if forward. I go like this, then it wants to push it the so, other direction, right? Then it'll come this way. Yeah. Now, in a cue ball, when you're doing a, when you're doing a cue ball pull, you might do a weird trick which professionals know how to do. They might give it a translational motion, the ball might go this way, but they might hit it below the center of mass, in which case it's moving forward and it's spinning backwards. Oh, yeah, it's called right. English. It's called an English, right? Yeah. yeah. That's different than just dropping it. Yeah, that yeah. one is, going, you're almost like doing like that, kind of, you know? You're spinning it backwards and you're giving it a push. The reason to do that is because when it hits the other ball, mm -hmm. you want it to come back to you. Because you're giving it this spin, right? That's very good technique. It yeah. hits it, and then it comes back to you because there's another ball here that you're aiming to hit next. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not just the That's bottom of the ball. Technique. Why huh? does it come back? Yeah, because it's spinning this way, it does come back. So yeah. you're giving a trend. It's going forward, but uh -huh. the rotational... It's going like this, and then when it hits that when guy, it, it gets a torque from that guy. It sends it back. Oh, it sends it back to you. But it can, you can also do that not just to come back to you, you can have a curve. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like my cousin does that where he'll hit the ball and it'll come back that, and curve. That's why they... So he can Yeah, because it. then you hit it slightly this way. Yeah. So it goes like this. Yeah. Yeah. And then so he hits it and it goes back to where he wants it. So if his ball is over there, not directly behind, he can actually have it hit. Oh, yeah. The back pool is all the uh, application that's of these things. That's why they always use... Um, use the like I don't know, like, it's like a stone to um, to sharpen like the top of it to increase the um, friction coefficient. Like, the chalk. The chalk. Yeah, the chalk. Chalk. Yeah. You put chalk at the, the, the end of the tip. Thing, right? so oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, so put the chalk. You're increasing the, the coefficient. Static, yeah, um, you're increasing the mu k. The mu k. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so that you can you know, kind of reflect. Well, oh, that's very good point yeah, you made because depending cool. on the mu k, it might take shorter time to reach. Uh, pure rolling motion, you know. Yeah. yeah, very good point. Okay, so um, mu k n plus mg. Now what's n? n is equal to mg cos theta again, okay? Okay, so then I can calculate what the acceleration of the center of mass is now. Coefficient of friction times 9.8 times cosine 40 plus 9.8 sine 40. Okay. Nine point three zero. Well, that's pretty fast. Nine point three zero. Okay, nine point three zero meters per second squared. That means the V final of the center of mass of this is what? What's the initial V center of mass? You just dropped it so that it doesn't have any uh, initial, right? So V final of center of mass is just gonna be the acceleration times T. 9.30 T, okay? Now let's calculate the acceleration of the, the tangential acceleration from the torque. 
torque is equal to I alpha. What's the only force causing the torque here? Kinetic force. Yeah, the mu kn. It's causing a negative torque, right? Because it's originally spinning this way. So that torque is trying to make it slow down so it won't spin as fast, right? So what's the torque? Negative R mu kn, right? Because it's, if it's over spinning like this and I exert a force like this, right, over spinning, it tends to slow the, the spin rate. So that's equal to moment of inertia, half m r squared alpha. Then I put my n, n is mg cos theta, r, r cancel, m, m cancel, negative 0.4, 9.8, cosine 40, half, and then r alpha is a tangential. Okay, so now is, a, is this A tangential the same as ACM? No, because it hasn't established rolling motion yet. It's completely different, right? This is at what rate the spin is gonna slow down, right? So uh, this is A tangential, then we solve that. Um, Yeah, but R alpha is a tangential. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, good so question. Where is that negative sign coming from? It just means that it's going to slow down. See the torque, see how it's spinning this way? Yeah. But when you exert the torque this way, uh -huh. the torque is going to cause that thing to slow down. It's a counterclockwise torque. But the object is spinning clockwise. And it oh, okay. stand, right? Yeah. So They're opposing each it's other. It's going outside. Yeah. But why is it like outside, outside torque side? will is the same as counterclockwise torque? Oh, outside torque is same as counterclockwise. Yeah, because when something is when you push something like this, it will tend to rotate counterclockwise, right? Yeah. So then R cross into F is outside, out of the page. So outside torque is the same as um, counterclockwise. Because it will make the object rotate counterclockwise. You see. Okay. If I pivot it here. And I exert a force, is that it's going counterclockwise? Okay. Oh, negative six. Okay, now what's given in the problem? The initial angular velocity of the ball is given. So what's the initial tangential velocity of the ball at its edge? V tangential of the edge. Then I would have to know the radius of the ball, right? So uh, the problem didn't give us that. What did it? In the previous. Yeah, in the previous. So we never had, we never needed the radius till now. It's always canceled, and it's become part of the A, right? It's always canceled. But now I do need the R because the problem only gave me the initial omega. So the radius was what? Two. Two meters yeah. per second. No, I mean sorry, two, just two meters. Yeah. So then V tangential of the N initial is uh, two times, and then initial omega is also two, so four meters per second, you see? So then what's my final V tangential? V tangential final, V initial tangential, plus A tangential T, right? So my initial V tangential is uh, four, What's my A tangential? Negative six, because it's gonna slow down. Right? So set this equal to this, and you'll say that's how many seconds it takes to establish pure rolling motion.
it's crazy. So much theory here. Yeah? Now you know what we you we meant by saying physics one gets harder, harder, harder. All these torques and stuff, right? So now you're gonna get here four divided by uh, fifteen point three, right? Point two six seconds. Two six one seconds. So a, a quarter of a second it establishes pure rolling motion. When you say the tangential end, which motion are you describing? Which one? The tangential end. Oh, the that's end. the velocity of the end of the thing, like the, the tip, I should say. Maybe tip is better. Like this. Four meters per second. That's four even? meters per second. Four, four meters, meters per second. So is it given or? Yeah, I told you the initial omega is two radians per second. Oh, two. Somebody radians. rotates it, then drops it. They rotate it at two meters per second. Two. They rotate it at two radians per second. Oh, two radians per second. Okay. Uh, that contact point, where did the uh, negative strip going that way? Or? The initial velocity. Tangential. Yeah, initial tangential is uh, four but I'm gonna want that to eventually slow down and I want it to equal to the center of mass velocity. So you're saying at the, at the contact point? Yeah. The tangential wouldn't be negative? Well, it's always gonna be negative. Even when we finally establish pure rolling motion, let's say somewhere here, it's gonna be to the left and the BCM is gonna be to the right once they're equal. So the total velocity here, contact point will be zero. Oh, okay. You see? So in other words, I could take this T that I got, I could put it back into the VCM and into the VT, take this and put it back here, back here, so you could say VCM final is what? 0 0.261 times 9.30, 2.43 meters per second. And then uh, V tangential is also 2.43. So here's what happens. During that point, a quarter of a second, the object is already moving what? 2.43 meters per second. And it's also rotating 2.43 meters per second. And then 2.43 meters per second. You see the idea? So now it has established pure rolling motion. After that, it can roll and then it's, start, it's gonna start accelerating. Uh, I mean, it, it's already accelerated, but uh, after that we can do whatever we did in the previous problem. Uh, so now, so oh, are you guys okay? So you put, we put the T back into there to find out what that velocity is. So the reason we created the VFTL and the VFT is because I thought that we're trying to find out the time that it takes to start making pure rolling motion. Yeah, see now I know VCM is 2.43, V tangential is also 2.43. But the initial V tangential was what? Four meters per second, and four meters per second. And the original VCM was zero, it wasn't moving. So it's friction that pushed it forward, but slowed it down, so that it won't rotate as much. So, okay, so to go back earlier, so we're drawing friction downward because even though it's technically opposing, it's causing the rolling motion. No, actually the friction is fighting against the rolling motion because you overrolled it. So it's slowing it down so it can't... It's be. slowing the rolling, yeah. it's uh -huh. slowing but, the rotation, but for the, but the friction, the we friction down, is be. slowing the rotation but it's pushing the, pushing the translation. Yeah, yeah right. because of the nature of rolling motion. Okay, that's why it's drawn downward. Yeah. Even, yeah. Even so, though it's up? Well, because it, it seemed like you were gonna say you are well, drawing the friction what, downward even though it's up. No, no, it well, is down. Even if it was like, a, you know? like, for instance, if it was a box, the friction would be opposing it, but because it's rolling, it's what causing the rolling motion, right? The friction? Yeah. No. Uh, I caused the rolling. Oh, in this, 
Mm-hmm. I gave it the spin. Well, let's say we just released it and we didn't. Oh, get... then it's different. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's where I'm. That's where I'm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once, once you establish pure rolling motion, then what happens? Friction. The friction is which direction? And you have to switch the Up. Now it's static friction, no longer kinetic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No longer kinetic. Fs. That's why. So let's find out before we go on. Let's find out the distance that it traveled during the time that that it took to establish pure rolling motion. So, so how do we do that? That's gonna be the vi. V is equal to v initial t plus half a t squared. The initial was zero, right? Right. The center of mass. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be half times acm times the time squared. That tells you that, okay, that's how far it would go in the time it takes for to establish pure rolling motion. Point three one six meters. Point three one six meters. So that's probably about that far, right? But the total distance is larger than that. Okay, now what do we do from that point on? How do we solve for the acceleration? So let's. So the, now the ball, imagine the ball starts here. So now what are the forces? N, mg, and then what's the friction? Up this way. In other words, after you establish pure rolling motion, it's the friction now that keeps it rolling. The static friction. Static friction, no longer kinetic, because the contact point is not sliding. <laughs> right? So now how do we do it? Mg sine theta minus Fs equals Ma. Uh, it's similar to what we did when there was rolling friction. We did minus Fs minus Fr. Right? Why, there's right? No, why there's no rolling friction? Well, I just yeah. said assume there's no rolling. If uh, there was rolling friction, no. if there was rolling friction, we would just go add Fr and then we would, here, we would have here minus... Uh, Mu R N. I just don't want to have too many things oh, in one yeah, problem. Oh, that's too complex. Yeah, too, too many things. I mean, it's not yeah. that much harder, but it, I just wanted to avoid it and say, okay, what if there isn't? Um, you know? So then you just do the same thing that we did with rolling friction. Then you did the uh, torque. Then you got half M A. So I'm doing it kind of quick here because this doesn't change and this doesn't change, right? It's the same. Then you put this in here. M, M, M cancel. So if there's no rolling friction, it's actually a lot quicker if without rolling friction. You just have, because you don't have mu R mg cos theta. You don't have the mu R. You just have the Fs, the torque. Then you take that, you substitute it into here. Then you add this to this. Then the M and the M uh, drop, right? And then A becomes what? Two thirds G sine theta. Right? Remember the A of a iced block is G sine theta. So rolling objects always accelerate slower than a block with ice, you know, without any friction. Why is FS half uh, MA? It's from the torque equation, remember? Torque is I alpha. <clears throat> and then this was R F S half M R squared alpha R R cancel R alpha is A tangential and then A tangential is the same as ACM. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then you take that you substitute into here. Then you get the A. Then once you get the A, you can now find out how long it will take you to travel the rest of the distance, the remaining distance. Right? Uh, 
Does this torque in any in any case, or is this torque just in the case of rolling motion, where it's equal to R S? Yeah, only in cylinder, because if it's a sphere, it would be two fifths m r squared. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking on the other side, uh, where torque is equal to R F S. This one? Yeah. Yeah, only if uh, you basically have an object rolling and then you have the friction. Oh, okay. Yeah, friction yeah, is the one that's cutting the torque. That's what torque is. Yeah, yeah. Only cylinder sphere. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now you're going to have uh, what? A is two thirds G sine theta. So now we already know that you've gone 0 0.316 meters of the way, right? So how much uh, distance is left to go? D2, we can call it, is going to be what? Uh, 2 over sine 40 minus 0 0.316. Right, because the total distance is 2 over this minus this, all right? Huh. So that's how much distance is left to go. So now how long will it take to reach the bottom? We know the acceleration. Which equation do we use? We're gonna go back to kinematics equations, right? X final equals X initial plus U initial T. So it's interesting that in this chapter we're also using a lot of the kinematics. Uh, the distance left is 2.795. What's the initial velocity? Initial velocity is the velocity that you have once you reach the uh, pure rolling motion, so it's 2.43, right? Because the friction has already pushed it. So then that is your initial velocity, 2.43 T plus half, what's the A? A two thirds G sine theta. 4.2. 4.2 meters per second squared. So that A is actually a lot lower than the A that it had during the because remember the A that it had during this stage was nine point something, yeah, right, friction. Yeah. yeah, so that's interesting. This is quite a bit less than that. So 4.2 times T squared. So now it's a quadratic equation you have to solve. Put it in solver. That makes sense, like if you had like a whole hoop and you're rolling it, and you're going forward, it's going, like it, the acceleration of it, it stops and rolls back really slowly. So that'd be kind of, yeah. See now, if this was a game of pool, of course, you would say, well, it depends what happens to the ball, depends where the next ball is. If the next ball is within the first point three one seconds, let's say the other ball is here, because it hasn't established pure rolling motion, now it's over spinning. It's gonna hit it, because it's over spinning, it's gonna hit it and continue going forward. Yeah. But if the other ball is down here somewhere, it's already established pure rolling motion, it might hit it and bounce back up. Mm -hmm. So the location of the next ball and how long it takes to reach pure rolling motion, that changes the, what's going to happen in the subsequent, uh, right? Um, okay, so once you get the T, then what can you do? Anyone got it? That in solver, 0.71 seconds. So then the total time will be the sum of 0.26 and 0.71, right? And then the final velocity that it has when it's down on the bottom is going to be what? The initial velocity is 2.43 plus AT. So V initial plus AT. So this is the 2.43 plus A times T. So what happens if there is more friction? What I wanna know is if there's more friction, does it take longer to reach pure rolling motion or shorter? So if the mu K goes bigger, how does that affect things? 
that makes the this thing ACM bigger. All right. So, uh, so how did we get the T? So if it is bigger. So if this number is bigger. Yeah, that's gonna give you bigger that. times t. But then this number it might affect this. How did we get the four minus six t? Four minus the six becomes bigger too, right? Because how did we get six? That was the a tangential, right? Right, a tangential. Did the a tangential depend on the friction coefficient too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was negative. So it would have been slowing down. Oh, so that also gets bigger, right? Wait, which one gets bigger? The you, six value gets bigger. You sure? Because How did we get six? Wasn't it why? F S times uh, 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 let's see here. F R times uh, R is equal to half. What did you change? R squared alpha R. Did you change R, mu k or? F R is half M A tangential. Yeah. Mu K M G cosine theta is half. M A T. So how did we get the uh, A tangential? We put the mu K, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah, if this is bigger, then this also gets bigger, right? So then when this gets bigger and this gets bigger, this one goes over there, but well, they both get bigger, essentially. So then you have here bigger plus bigger. So this, those whole sides get bigger and then T gets shorter, right? So if you have more friction, you change the uh, mu k, right? Huh? Change the mu k. The increase the mu k. Yeah, mu k. Yeah. So that means it establishes pure rolling motion quicker. Yeah. And then it's nicely rolling. Right. So maybe there are some cases for a pool player you don't want it to be so sandy. You don't want you want it to kind of slide more. Uh, you want to take longer to reach pure rolling motion. So maybe it's not always good to have a lot of friction. Well, let's see. Usually they just change their initial <coughs> velocity. The, the kick they put on it. That's is, also true. It's just as important as the as the as all of that other yeah. stuff. Yeah, the kick that they put on it. So you can see how many things that this relies on. This is a pretty good example putting all of these together, rolling motion, sliding, pure rolling motion. Okay, now let's go to chapter 11, where it introduces us to torque, angular momentum, and the concept of cross product. 